Hey everyone, Docwell here, and welcome to another video. Today's video is going to be the mid-tier list for patch 7.32D, and as always, I get my information from the Trends tab, from Dota Buff, um, a lot of it from Dota 2 Pro Tracker, the recent, uh, you know, pre competitive matches in the DPC, the qualifiers, and I kind of mash all that together, give my opinion, put things where I want it to be, and it's more of a pub list, it's not pub tier list, not supposed to be like a, you know, super high MMR, the best players, you know, competitive tier list, more of a pub one, and so that's what I do. Usually, that's how I arrive at the list. As always, let me know in the comments if you agree, disagree, where you would put people differently. And uh, if you like the video, like, comment, subscribe, all of those kinds of things. So without further ado, let's just jump into the S-tier heroes. And the first hero that we're going to be talking about is Lena. I think everyone is waiting for me to talk about Lena that. because I didn't include Lena in my carry tier list yesterday. And there's actually a reason for that. And I'll kind of go into that here as I explain um, why I didn't do that. But first, I'll just say Lena's very good right now. Lena is a really good hero overall. I think she's kind of been on the upswing. I didn't really like when they changed the passive originally. Um, I didn't like how that made the hero feel, but then they buffed the passive, and I think it like kind of fixed the hero because when they first changed it, it was lower duration. It really felt like you couldn't keep stacks up to gank or to hit towers. It just felt super awkward. When they increased the duration, though, now it's a lot better. Like, you can... You can kind of go from camps or waves to, to hitting towers. You're not, like, if you're pushing with your team, there's not that much of a delay between when the stacks run out and the new creep wave spawns in the base, like, for instance. And it just feels a lot better. You can get around way more and kind of gank while your stacks are still up, all that kind of stuff. So it feels a lot better. And just in general, this hero is really good. A lot of magic damage early, and it scales with right click. So it does a little bit of everything. She has insane attack speed. She does just, like, honestly everything really well. And traditionally, this hero has been played as a mid, but now it's kind of being played as a carry a lot more. In fact, it's probably one of the most popular carries now in higher MMRs. But the reason that I don't include it as a carry is a little bit because I think it's kind of a fad, and I'll explain to you why. Now, obviously, these right-click heroes like Lena, like SF, they have been kind of transitioning more to carry. So I understand that is kind of a trend, and I won't be super surprised if Lena stays as a potential carry. But I think there's some differences between Lena and some of these other heroes that make her a better mid, and I think for the most part, you should probably just play her as a mid. And I'll go into those now. So the, there's basically three things. The first thing is, kind of like I said, with SF and some of these other ranged uh, carries one of these some of these other ranged heroes that used to be mid SF sniper you know some of that kind of those kinds of heroes they're transitioning to a carry and I think that's largely because of the meta a little bit of because of how they work but it's also the meta in general you see clinks you see drow you see sniper you see SF you see all these ranged carries doing really well and that's just what the meta is right now I think once the if there's a bigger patch and the meta changes I think you know, this might go away and these heroes might go back to being mids or whatever. I think that is potentially something that could happen in the next month or two if we see a big patch. So keep that in mind. That's the first reason that I think this may be a little bit of a fad. But really the other reason that is one of the bigger ones is that this hero is just, I think, better as a mid, just overall. Because this hero needs levels and this hero is also mana starved. So you need levels because... You obviously want to put a lot of levels in your Fiery Soul so that you can get a lot of attack speed, you can last hit better, you can harass better, you can, you know, pressure towers, you can do everything you want with that, but then if you leave your spells at pretty low level, then you're really not doing a lot of damage to the jungle, and so having this hero share XP with a laning partner, it's just, it doesn't feel as good, you're not ramping up as fast, it just doesn't feel that great, although you still will dominate the lane, it's not the best, plus, then you also kind of need to buy a lot more clarities, you're wasting a lot more money, which bottle is really good from the mid lane to just make sure you can spam out your spells you have constant regen and then you're kind of like rushing this boot to travel and you just never have to worry about regen whereas a carry yes you might be buying you know you might be buying the uh uh, what is the the Falcon Blade, you know, mana regen items. That helps a little, but it's just not good enough. You can even buy Falcon Blade from the mids. So you have Bottle and Falcon Blade. So I just think that overall the hero is better as a mid. Um, not that I'm saying, and the thing is, I'm not saying that I'm disagreeing completely with the pros. Like, I'm not saying I know better than them. In fact, I think they understand their meta and the fact that the range damage dealers are so good and they're playing it in that role, and I don't think they're wrong. What I really think is it's better as a mid overall for most people, is what I'm saying. Is that, in general, I think it's the same problem that Sniper has. Is that Sniper, I think, is really good at lower MMRs because people just don't jump to Sniper. They don't know how to deal with it. And then I think Sniper is good at high MMRs because people understand how to, like, play around him as a team. You know, they get what Sniper does. Sniper it has more utility now in some ways, and then, 
you know, people understand, okay, we need to protect the sniper. If they jump on the sniper, they're going to waste a lot of stuff and then we can save him, all that kind of stuff. But in the mid MMRs, like from 1K to 5K or something, I just don't love like sniper that much. And I don't think Lena as a carry is really that great because it suffers from a lot of the same problems. And if you want to play Lena, just play it mid. I think it's going to suffer from a lot of problems in the carry role. You're not going to do as well. I think it's more of like a high MMR thing where people understand the game a little bit better. And you can basically do the same thing with Lena from the mid lane, but you're just, you're just going to do it better, to be honest. Like, you're just going to do it better because you're going to get solo levels. You're going to dominate lanes. You're going to have plenty of mana regen. You're going to scale in the same exact way. So that's kind of why I think... It's just a mid. Keep it as a mid for most people. Even though you see this happening at high MMRs, don't always follow the high MMR builds because sometimes that's really a matter of understanding that your team is going to play correctly. And it, even at my MMR to lower MMRs, your team is just not going to be good enough or they're not going to play around you correctly. And so I think that's that's the biggest thing. And then the last thing I'll say about Lena, don't want to spend too much time. I've already spent like five minutes talking about her, is that the other big exception is that Lena is a lane dominating hero, absolutely crushes lanes. Uh, there's really, with her insane range and all the stuff that she has with these water runes, she just doesn't lose a lane where let's say SF, SF is kind of the same way. Like he's very good in lane now, but he can have bad matchups. Lena like really doesn't have a bad matchup to be honest. There's like not bad matchups for this hero and you can always get away with farm. You can always harass people pushed out. You can always do almost whatever you want in the mid lane with this hero. And so I think there's very rare exceptions. Um, like there's not too many heroes that do what Lena does with very rare exception. And so I think a lot of those other heroes, like maybe Sniper, SF, they have weaknesses like getting ganked or they can potentially be punished. And so if you can just stick them in the safe lane and they can do the same thing, it's very beneficial. I don't think Lena benefits from exactly the same thing. So in any case, that's my justification for not saying Lena is a carry um, right now. Maybe in the future, you know, it goes a few months, some patches happen and she's still a carry. Hey, I'll, I'll definitely say, okay, she is a good carry now. And I'm not saying she's bad. I just think for all of those reasons I just stated, you know, um, it's a fat, it's like a little bit of a trend in this patch. I think she's just better at your MMR probably as a mid. She just benefits from the levels and the mana and all that kind of stuff more. I think I'm going to keep her as a mid, but she is like the best mid right now. She just, like I said, dominates every lane, carries the game, magic damage, right click, everything. She does everything, literally everything, uh, it just, the whole package, Lena is the whole package right now. So anyway, that's Lena. Spent a lot of time on that, but I think it was deserved because people kind of wanted to hear my take on that. And it might be a little controversial. You might disagree, but just let, let me know why. Um, I'm perfectly open to hearing that. So that is Lena. And then that's the list. See you guys. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> I just took a lot of time for Lena. I'm not going to take as much time for the next two, which is Tinker. So Tinker, I put it S because Tinker's just like a cheesy hero. You have to be a Tinker player, but this hero is so annoying right now. I believe they buffed it to make the uh, the rearm time a little bit faster, maybe the TP time too. They buffed like some aspects of that to make it a little bit quicker on this hero, and it just it feels so annoying, man. Like it's always been annoying, and I think the change with not having like March and having this uh, shield now, it's like not it's not any better. Like they just made it almost like more annoying. <laughs> Honestly, I think they should just go change it back to the march like hero because at least then like if you caught the hero you could kill him it was just a lot harder to catch him because he was obviously using march he was getting out also now it's just like you catch the hero it doesn't even matter the guy's just blinking in like a psychopath and he has his little shield on and he's pressing shiva's 20 times and you're just like melting and you're like oh i'm gonna stun him and you stun him and he's like oh psych and he just like rearms again and it's just like it's so annoying dude and he's so good now um if you can get to the point like if you not survive the early game as you this hero is a pretty good early game hero like your laning stage is pretty decent it just because you only really tp on towers in the beginning you're not as good of a ganker but if you can like get your farm up and farm pretty well for the first 15 minutes get a good like level 12 timing i think and like uh get a good blink timing like you can be absolutely ridiculous on this hero and it's super hard um if you know how to play him to like lose the game you can just like solo carry game so uh, Tinker's very, very good right now as a cheese hero. And then Batrider, I think, is the other S-tier hero because this hero in the right game is just broken. Um, I, it's kind of one of these things, either bad is, like, broken or it's, like, not very good. And I think it's just broken right now. Like, it's very good. Now, I, it's not, like, as broken as it has been in patches where it was, like, you could do Manta and stuff where it was actually legitimately, like, game-breaking glitches, easy win. But this hero's just so good. If... You don't have a matchup or like something that can dispel or, you know, just a good matchup against Bat, some kind of hero that can deal with it in the mid lane. 
it, it, you just lose. Like you just straight up lose if the person knows what they're doing. And then this here disrupts team fights, goes around picking people off. Now the uh, the lasso cooldown is like 110 plus people are buying um, the cooldown reduction item. I always forget when I'm like talking on the fly here, I always forget Octarine Core. People are buying Octarine Core, um, all this kind of stuff. It's just absolutely ridiculous. Like his, his talent tree is good. He just is so hard to deal with. Scales into the late game pretty well. Um, just a pretty good cheese hero that you can dominate with. Now, obviously, I think at lower MMRs, it can kind of fall off because obviously you're just kind of sacrificing yourself a little bit to go in. He doesn't do right-click damage. So you always have to be a little bit careful of heroes that don't do right-click damage. But you can still, like, snowball the game so hard that it almost doesn't even matter because the game's just over in the first 20 minutes. So that's my S tier here. Now I'm going to move on to A tier. So A tier, first I have Primal Beast here. And actually, I was debating whether putting Primal Beast in S tier because I personally don't really see very much of this hero I haven't really seen it do that well, but apparently Topson has been like crushing on the hero. Like they, he's just been doing insane on the hero. And I think this hero has like the best win rate of any mid hero um, on Dota 2 Pro Tracker. Like it's like uh, Dire and uh, Radiant are a little bit different, but I think on like the Dire, it has like a 60% win rate and on Radiant, it's like 54, something ridiculous. Um, and so I was going to put it S, but I just haven't seen it be that good. So I, I think... It will probably be S in the next month or so if things don't change and if people realize like what Thompson's doing or something. Maybe it's just like him and he's the reason that everything is like this hero's so good right now. But I don't know. This hero's I don't feel like it's that broken personally um, based on my own experience with it. But clearly the statistics bear out that it is pretty good. So that's why I didn't put it S, but I do put, put it A. There's nothing new to the hero, really. I mean, it does all the same stuff. Very low cooldown, constant brawling, you know, all that kind of stuff just makes us good, makes us here good. Ags, uh, BKB piercing eventually, all all that kind of stuff is just why this hero is good. Very tanky, hard to deal with in lane. Just typical primal B stuff. Um, nothing super new. I just think the Topson's been kind of crushing with it. So um, yeah, that's primal beast. Next is Pangolier. Some people rate Pangolier a little bit higher. I think Pangolier could be. You could. I think for like pro meta, I think Pangolier might be like S tier just because this hero is like insanely good at team fighting. Does pretty much everything you want. Uh, it's just that in pubs, I put this hero a little bit lower. Like you can still dominate the game and you do sort of right click damage and you can like really disrupt team fights and do a lot of good with this hero. I just think you could potentially get punished in lane uh, because it's a melee hero. I mean, you can secure farm pretty easily, but like I wouldn't as. I'm not a huge Pangolier player, but I wouldn't love going up against, like, Alina. It just wouldn't feel great until I am able to get my levels and stuff. If the Alina knows what, you know, if the Alina knows what they're doing or the Tinker knows what they're doing or the Bat, you know, I feel like you're just going to lose. So that's kind of the reason why I put it in A tier here. Although, you can kind of manage to get by and then gank and all that kind of stuff. It's just, I think in lower MMRs, that, that ganking style, relying on that to just, like, win the game it's not always good because sometimes it's not going to pay off because your teammates are going to be dumb and they're not going to like help you with the gank. Um, so yeah, that's, and then with not having the small camp to like rely on and fall back on if you can't go in the lane, that's just like a hard thing for this hero to, to, you know, recover from. And so that's why I put it in A and not S. Even though it's pretty good, like I said, it's probably S tier in the pro beta. Next we have Shadow Fiend. Shadow Fiend is just a good all around hero right now. It's basically Shadow Bat Rider or, you know, it's Shadow Rider or Bat Fiend. You know, that I said that same thing in the uh, in the carry list. This hero is ridiculous. It has this weird like sticky napalm slow effect now and it's raises. People just buy like nine mangoes and just run in lane, just raise you like 50 times if you get out of position at all. You're just dead. It's not as big of a deal in mid lane, but dude, I've seen this hero literally dive like tier one mid at like level two or level one even and just like raise you like 50 times and you're like between your tier one and your tier two like hitting creeps in mid and the guy just comes up and just starts raising you and you're like, uh, bro, what? what? What am I supposed to do? Now I'm like giga slowed and I can't move and this guy's just like raising me from a, th a thousand range and he's not even right clicking me so the tower doesn't aggro him. It's, it's This here is kind of broken, honestly, I feel like. And uh, there's also two different builds you can go. You can go the more right click build or you can go the, uh, the magic damage build or I think people really are trying to to go more of like the hybrid magic plus right click they're kind of going for like an initial blink maybe shadow blade like going for alt style in the beginning and then transitioning with like going blink bkb and then going back for the right click going for like satanic and mkb so you have that and then you can finish your uh your blink into like the the um 
Arcane Blink, so you still have that, like, insane alt potential, but now you're also doing right clicks. I think it's, like, people have mixed the two, and it's, like, the perfect combination now. Um, and I think that's kind of how this hero is. And I, honestly, I don't really... I feel like the hero's broken. Honestly, I feel like the hero's S-tier, but I think just it's not as... It can be punished, I think, in lane sometimes. It can be punished in higher MMRs. So that's why it's, like, just lower all the time. It's just one of these heroes that has weaknesses that you can exploit, but otherwise, I think the hero's honestly just broken. Next, we have Leshrac. Leshrac... They nerfed Leshrac like in Bloodstone and stuff a little bit, but they just didn't do enough. Honestly, the biggest nerfs last patch was uh, were to um, Wraith Pact. That was like the biggest nerf. Now they did nerf some of the stuff that Leshrac does, but they didn't nerf it enough. And I think Leshrac is still good. It's not like S tier broken like it was, but it, it's still good. Uh, Bloodstone is still purchasable and uh, still pretty good as an item. So that's why Leshrac is up here. Ember is just, like, the best spirit hero, and I think there's always going to be, like, a spirit hero that is pretty good in the meta for whatever reason. Just there's always seems to be one of them, and, uh, I mean, Lena, you can almost, like, count as a spirit hero in a way, but it doesn't have, you know, Lena doesn't have mobility. Maybe, like, Tinker is the other kind of spirit hero, whatever you want to say, but anyway... Um, this like mix of magic and physical damage and, uh, Ember can also just like chase you around. He's very good with some, you know, if you need mobility, like if you see, I mean, th there is mobility here, but this is like the highest mobility hero of these top heroes. Like obviously you have Tinker blinking around, Bat has, you know, the going over cliffs, you know, you have Pangolier with the alt and Primal Beast can run in and all that kind of stuff. But, but Ember is like the true mobility hero. And so if you need that on the team, if he has a good lane, um, in the earlier part of the lane, you can really start, like, pushing people out of lane and just ganking all the side lanes and just doing really well into the late game. Ember just does similar Ember Spirit stuff uh, that he's always done. I don't think there's anything too crazy I just about him that's different. I just think that he is... Uh, I think they're just going for ags, doing the same kind of stuff that they've all they have always done. And he's just pretty good right now. And I think he's the case, like I was saying in the, um, in the carry tier list, I think he's kind of just risen up as like he was always decent and now he's kind of risen to the top as everything else has kind of been nerfed a little bit. And I think that's kind of the case with him. There wasn't anything crazy about him. It's just that he was good. A lot of things got nerfed a little bit and now he's just risen up to the A tier because of that. Next we have Tiny. Honestly, personally, I would almost put Tiny S. I was kind of debating that in some way because this hero seems insane still. Like it just seems so crazy when you get this, uh, you get this Echo Saber, you get crit and you get ags. Dude, you just sit in the trees and, like, one-shot people. It's absolutely insane. So that's the build now. You just run around. You get, like, Blink, Echo Saber, uh, Daedalus, Ag Ags, and you just, like, throw trees at people, and they just, like, instantly die. It's ridiculous. I always thought for the longest time that people were underestimating this tree throw because I would see it in some games, like, randomly. Someone would just get this uh, Ags and just, like, kill people and do insane damage. And I was like, damn, this seems insane. I don't wonder why more people aren't picking it up. And now, because, like, all the other builds have gone to the wayside, this is, like, the build for the hero, and he's just destroying. So, uh, honestly, I don't know how to deal with this hero. He has, like, 4k HP. He's insanely tanky. He still takes towers pretty quickly. Like, you can just, why not, like, late game, just buy a shard. You have, like, the permanent tree. Then you're just, like, sitting in the back and just, like, throwing a thousand trees. People are perma-slowed, and you do, like, 10k damage in an AoE. Dude, it's ridiculous. I don't, this hero is, like, I don't really almost know how to deal with it. Like, how do you deal with Tiny? If, if you, if on Tiny, if you get items and the game isn't over, you just win. You just straight up win, dude. The only thing I can do is pop BKB and then late game, the BKBs are like six seconds. So anyway, and even then, like you still take physical damage. You're just not slow. So you can just run out of it and hope you don't die. Anyway, that's my rant on Tiny. He's kind of insane. He feels really good. Uh, I would say almost potentially S tier. Maybe honestly, I might even like put him up here just cause like screw it, dude. I just think he's like S tier, dude. You know what? I'm editing this. I'm putting it. I'm t I, this is the first time I've done this. I'm putting tiny S tier, guys. He is insane. I'm telling you right now, this hero is completely broken. Ridiculous hero. So anyway, that's that's uh, that's tiny. Next, we have Huskar. I just think Huskar is kind of like, based on the win rate and the statistics, and I think Huskar is generally good. He's like probably one of the better cheese heroes. Um, I, I think he got like, he was popular. Then he got nerfed and... Uh, and his uh, main item build got kind of fixed or nerfed with uh, Armlet being, like, changed because I guess there was a bug where it wasn't draining as much HP as it should. And then I think he's recently received some buffs. I think he's also... Some other heroes have got nerf, gotten nerfed. And then I think really the big thing on this hero is it's, it's changed with the Ags and stuff where now you're really this, like... Ags lockdown. You're like a weird Legion Commander-style hero and um, where later in the game, once you get Ags, you just stun people 
and you just taunt them and it's like super hard to deal with. Uh, I think he's just like a very good cheese hero. Maybe he's a little bit high in general for uh, maybe high MMRs or whatever, but I think this hero is very good right now as like a cheese pick. I do think he's pretty good uh, personally. So this is more like a pub thing. Um, I usually leave the cheese heroes to the end of the list there. And so that's where I think Huskar is right now, um, mainly as a mid. I don't think he's really good in any other position right now. So that's A tier. Next, we have the B tier. And I put Sniper here. Like, this is why, like, with some people putting Sniper higher up, I think Sniper's good. Kind of like I said with Lena, though, and maybe in the carry list I said this too. I think I did. And I don't think I put him that high either. I think I put him B, maybe A. I just think that Sniper is not as good unless you are, like, Herald or you're immortal. I just think that's how it is because this hero is... It's good, but then if you don't have the right team comp and the te your team doesn't play around you, you can still get jumped and just killed. Like, you, if they have an ember, they have, you know, whatever on the team that you can just jump you and it just feels so bad. Like, yes, you can buy BKB. Yes, you can buy all the stuff. There are ways to deal with it. Don't get me wrong. But it's just, I don't think it's as good as people in higher MMRs like, think it is, at least for lower MMR pubs. Like, it, it just has these high swings. Like, very, it can be very good and very powerful sometimes, and other times can feel very bad. Next, we have Razor. Um, so, I know... Don't get me wrong, guys. I understand Razor's very good right now. I'm going to have him higher up on the offlane list because I think that's where he's mainly going to be played. I don't think he's really as much of a carry, maybe more of a carry. I don't think he's a great mid right now just because I don't think this hero is a mid um, for the most part. I think he can do it, but really just because the main way this hero works is static linking people and you don't really have much room to static link people in the mid lane. Uh, you don't have much room to chase them down. It just doesn't really work. Plus, you have a lot of magic damage dealers that that's how they get CS anyway. Like Lena, like Tinker, you know, uh, like uh, like Tiny. Like, a lot of these heroes l rely on some kind of spell to get the CS anyway. So, you're, you're barely draining much from them anyway. And then they can still get CS regardless. It just doesn't feel that great. It's good. It's just not great. And then we have Viper. Another ranged hero that I think is pretty good. It still is... Um, it still is like decent for all the reasons that Viper is decent. I think the biggest thing, obviously, with Razor, I'll just talk about it now. I guess since I didn't talk about it in you know the last uh, video either, is like the new Bloodstone build is why this hero is coming back in the meta. It's going to be very good as an offlaner because Bloodstone is ridiculous on this hero for whatever reason. People kind of just figured out that Bloodstone uh, is like broken, and I've seen it in some games where this hero just like heals, like it just like Giga heals because of the spell life steal. So that's kind of why Razor's on the up and up. But uh, I still think mid lane it's B, and then Viper's similar. I think you can build Bloodstone on this hero, and now the Ags. I guess with the Bloodstone and the Ags. It just, like, it's not just that you have a disarm. I thought the axe was really bad, to be honest. But apparently, it just does, like, insane damage. Um, so I've seen some clips and some stuff where this hero just, like, uses its axe. It's not even just the disarm. It's just that people run in if they don't have BKB or whatever. Um, and even if they do, it's obviously not that great. But it's just, like, you just do ridiculous magic damage. You can't die, and they just, like, melt. Um, so that's honestly why Viper is pretty good right now. I still think Viper suffers from some of the same problems, though. Slow doesn't i mean he farms decently but it's just like a such a slow hero like if you just look at the heroes around that are like good i feel like so many of these heroes are fast or have mobility you know they have some they, they buy some kind of mobility or there's some way to get around the map and viper's just one of these exceptions where he just has no mobility he can't get around he doesn't buy blink he doesn't really even buy hurricane pike very often so i think that's just really the weakness of the hero it's the same kind of thing um the axe does help him with the fact that if you get initiated on, you can have some way of dealing with it, but then you're getting the ags and you're sacrificing, you know, the other stuff that you could be getting. So it's just, it's kind of awkward. And that's why I put it in this B tier. Next we have TA. TA is decent. I don't think there's anything special about this hero. Just like kind of typical TA stuff. Uh, just middle of the pack does things TA does. And then, uh, but just isn't exceptional and isn't uh, really bad. Just kind of mid tier. And that's why I put it here. It's okay. It's a ranged ish hero. And so that's why I think it's decent, but it's still not the best. And from mid lane, it's still weird because you do want to farm. You don't have that small camp and stuff like that. But you can dominate lanes if you're good enough. Zeus, another hero that nothing special about Zeus. Zeus has been nerfed a little bit since he was like really kind of broken and OP. But he just does Zeus things still. He still can get his farm. He still can secure his farm. He still does insane magic damage late game. It's just, you know, with pipe being a very good item, people buying Mage Slayer more often, it just can feel like this hero doesn't have as much impact as he once did. So that's why he's just middle of the road. I think if pipe wasn't a good item and Mage Slayer didn't exist, this hero would be broken. But uh, there's a lot more magic resistance options these days, and that's what makes Zeus just not as good. Plus the fact that he has been nerfed a little bit. 
Puck is like the next best spirit hero, because this is pretty much a spirit hero. Just another hero that if you need mobility, you know, Ember's Band, whatever. He's just He just does Puck things, middle of the road, nothing great, nothing special, nothing horrible, but just does normal Puck things as usual. And then we have Invoker. Invoker's kind of this hero that I think is largely about pairing him up with some other hero that either you are very good with with the uh, Ags, so your like Cataclysm is very good, like let's say Faceless Void or something like that, some kind of very good Cataclysm pairer, or you can go around ganking people, draining mana, like you're really effective at that, and you don't necessarily need to have damage because you have a lot, you have like a carry off lane, you have a carry carry, and you don't need to do damage, you can just provide a lot of control, a lot of chaos, and be really annoying. Um, but I put it mid-tier here because it's, I mean, I think the statistics bear it out, but it's also just one of those things that you, sometimes it's hard to carry the game by yourself because you don't have a good Cataclysm setup and you don't have a lot of damage in your other cores or they're just not playing very well and you go for this more control style build and it doesn't do much. Like, sure, you Tornado, EMP, all that stuff, but then it's like, okay, well, whatever. It doesn't matter because the guys aren't dead. They just don't have mana, but they're just, you know, your team is useless. So <laughs> that's why it kind of sucks. OD kind of a weird hero at a weird spot. I potentially think this hero can be very good, but it's like kind of one of these heroes that I think it would be better if it had a build that it actually wanted to go, but it doesn't really have that. It has the Meteor Hammer, which is kind of the classic build now that's been around for a long time, ever since Meteor Hammer was introduced, but that's been nerfed a little bit. So people have been kind of transitioning away from that. And then this hero becomes more of a right-click farming kind of hero where you buy Witchblade or you buy Midas and you kind of just sit back and you farm and you get your items and then you one-shot people and you save people with your eggs and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so it's good in that way. I just think it's a little bit awkward to play this hero without any kind of tower taking or ganking ability, and you're just kind of buying Midas in the mid lane. So that's what makes the hero weird. It's like, this is honestly, I feel like more of a hero that should be played as a carry in some ways than like even Lina, uh, because it doesn't really rely on runes. It does it does rely on levels, of course, but it doesn't rely on runes or mana or anything like that. And you're just buying Midas, like honestly, or, or Witchblade. Like, yeah, you can gank, but like, are you really going to gank if you're not buying Meteor Hammer? I don't know. I mean, I guess, but it just doesn't, it, that's why it feels awkward. But the fact that it's still B, it's still pretty good, kind of speaks to how decent the hero is right now because it feels like the build is so weird. I think if they change the hero or the build gets more solidified, it can be kind of broken, to be honest. And then the next like four heroes, we basically have Tusk, which is kind of like this hero that's just really, it's just a good hero right now. And so you can play it mid. I think it's better as like more of an offlane or a four, but you can play it mid, get a lot of items, like one shot people. You do a ton of damage with your punch. And then if you get level 25, you can honestly like solo carry games and just destroy people with this hero. And so it's kind of all about uh, ganking and you can find farm. You're pretty good at farming now with the snowball and the ice shards. You can clear waves pretty well, but it's, you know, you gank, you just one shot people once you get Deso and AC and all this kind of stuff. So it's, it can be very good in that way. It's just a good all around hero. So that's why it's played mid now and uh, it's decent. Doom, a very good hero overall as well. I think this hero just farms super quick. It's kind of like Tusk in a similar way where it's just like, it's a good hero. So it's played mid because you can just like get your farm, get your levels. It's a little bit like OD though. And the fact that you are sort of like playing carry from the mid lane, like the only contribution you have is you go to a side lane and you just doom somebody. Uh, which don't get me wrong is good, but it just, it's not, doesn't have the effect of, you know, a puck or an ember, or like any of these other heroes, a Lena even, or like a tinker. Once you get blink, it just doesn't have that effect. It's like, you just doom somebody, hope you get the kills. You can run them down. Sure. It's more than in the late game with this AOE doom with the refresher potentially, or the low cooldown. Once you get Octarine, all that kind of stuff. And Octarine's really good too, because you have like infinity stuns on your infernal blade. So this hero is just really overpowered and really, really good right now. It's just that on the mid lane, it's kind of a little awkward because you are just kind of more of a farming mid laner. And I don't know that that's necessarily bad because a lot of these heroes like to farm. It's just that you have almost no impact if you need to have it in the side lanes. And then the next two heroes are Lone Druid and Arc Warden. I think I talked about them in the carry uh, tier list. I think they're just a little bit worse on the mid lane statistically. So that's why I put them down here. But I think actually... They're pretty good mids, I would say. They're pretty good cheesy mids. They're kind of like a Huskar, like a Bat Rider. They're pretty cheesy in the way of like not very many people play them. They're hard to deal with. And I think you scale pretty well as well. Like you take towers really quickly with Lone Druid. If people don't deal with you, if you're an Arc Warden and you're able to get your Midas and you're able to get your Glypemir and you're able to get these timings, later you can go for insane right click 
builds or you can go for these ridiculous like sheep builds where you just have super low cooldowns and you're just wreaking havoc. So it's kind of these these heroes that you just have to deal with them. And if you don't, you can just like straight up win the game. And they're like pub stomping heroes. So that's Lone Druid. That's Arc Warden. Next, we'll move on to the C tier. So C tier, we have Storm Spirit. Just not a great hero right now. It just this hero's been nerfed uh, and been bad ever since they nerfed the Null Talisman thing. It just feels awkward. The build is weird. Do you really want to go for the Orchid? I don't know, but you, do you want to go Witchblade? I don't know. It feels weird too. Do you want to go for S and Y uh, or uh, S and K, uh, K and S, whatever you want to say, uh, Kaya, Sanj, um, first? Like, I guess that's good, but then it's just kind of this weird passive item. Like, it's, sometimes it's still hard to kill people. It's okay, just not great. Uh, we'll see if it ever gets, gets some kind of buffs and moves up in the meta. But right now, it's just like there's so many more heroes that... Like Elite Puck or Ember, these other mobility heroes are just better than Storm Spirit. Kunkka, I've seen Kunkka do pretty well sometimes. Uh, I think it's an okay hero, just not great. There's nothing special about the hero other than uh, it has like kind of two builds. It has a good control build where you can go like eggs and that kind of stuff. And you have this uh, ship fleet at 25 and you're just like disrupting team fights. Or you can actually go a little bit more of a right clicker build with like... Um, with AC and those kinds of things, it's just not the best, but I've seen it have a lot of success, be pretty tanky. It's just that it can lose some lanes because it, like, it needs some levels before it can actually clear through waves. It doesn't, like, there's no small camp to farm anymore. It can gank, but a lot of these heroes have abilities to, like, turn the ganks or get away from the uh, boat and stuff like that. So anyway, Kunkka's okay right now. Death Prophet, a hero that is pretty good. I think more of an offlaner recently, and that's because like the the thing that makes this hero good is the siphon and stuff, and you just really can't take advantage of the siphon as much from the mid lane. It's kind of a similar problem to Razor. Uh, this hero also has a very long cooldown on its ultimate, which it's like dependent on. And if you notice, like a lot of these heroes don't have like long cooldown dependent ultimates. I think that's something that it just more and more people don't really love to to rely on, especially in pubs, I think. Like, if you're reliant on a low cooldown ultimate, or a high cooldown ultimate, sorry, I think I've been saying the wrong thing. If you're relying on this super high cooldown ultimate, where it's like, it takes forever to come back, and you just, like, blow it at the wrong time, in pubs, that just feels so bad, because coordination is just terrible. Queen of Pain is just also another sort of spirit hero. This hero does just Queen of Pain stuff, same thing it's always done, just kind of feels pretty bad, doesn't feel like it, it always, it's always had mana issues, so you can like never farm with this hero because of the mana issues uh, that it has, um, it can, can potentially dominate lanes, but honestly the, the potential that it has had in the past for lane domination just feels like it's gone by the wayside, I feel like there's so many heroes that just match up way better against Queen of Pain these days with kind of all the different buffs that have happened, all the water runes now, all this stuff that just makes people, like, not... They just don't care about the dagger. And if you're leveling to dagger 4 or, like, 3 or whatever it is, like, early in the game, that you don't have a scream to either gank or to farm the waves or the jungle or anything like that. So this hero is just at a weird spot and has been for a very, very long time. Monkey King. I think I think it's just situationally good in the mid lane against, like, melee heroes and stuff. But I just don't think you can get away... Like, if you're picking this against, like, a Lina or something like that, or, like, a Bat Rider, you're just gonna die. Like, you're just gonna feed. And so that's a problem. I think the hero has really bad matchups, but, like, it can be good in pro games or in higher MMRs if you know the matchup is good. Uh, or you're good at with the hero in general and they someone else picks a melee hero. But, like, you're just gonna get stomped in, like, against a sniper or against a lot of these ranged heroes. You're just gonna get giga stomped. It's gonna be really bad. Necro. Um... Kind of at a bad spot, but again, it's kind of like a Monkey King thing where if you have good matchups in the mid lane, if you have good matchups in the game overall and you're still hard to kill through your uh, Ghost Shroud or Depth Shroud, whatever it is. Um, yeah, which one is it? Ghost Shroud. Yeah, what is Depth Shroud? Anyway, that's definitely an ability. But uh, basically, for, through your Ghost Shroud, if you can still survive and there's not a ton of damage, like there's not a Zeus or like someone else like this that like really like makes you just easily killable when you press that button. Um, and there's not anybody that has like, that really buys a, Aeon, not Aeon Disc, a, uh, oh, I always forget this item. Why am I always forgetting item names, dude? It's insane. Anyway, the item that dispels you. If, uh, if no one really buys that early, then you're just going to get like stomped. Or if you have a really bad, or you're going to be good. But if someone buys that earlier, you have a really bad matchup or you have a, there's a dispel on the enemy team without even buying that item. It's just like, I don't know, this hero just feels really bad. It can feel, like, horrible or, like, broken, honestly. That's the way that it feels to me. 
Wind Ranger, single target, mid lane hero. That's just like, if there's one hero on the enemy team you just need to kill, it can be really good. Otherwise, it just feels honestly underwhelming. Like, I think there's a lot of ways to deal with this. The evasion isn't as good as it once was, because like I said, so many heroes have like things that per, uh, pierce evasion or magic damage. And so it just can feel not nearly as good as it used to. Pudge, I think, is a better carry and even a better off lane. Just because in mid, you, you do get farm, you do get levels, but you can get kind of stomped in mid lane a little bit if you're against a lot of these ranged heroes that can just hit you from afar. And if you're relying on these weird, like, hook plays to get people out of position from, like, fog on the cliff, like, that's kind of how you play mid, or you, like, go and gank. And I think if you're relying on that, it just doesn't feel good. Now, if you get these games where you hit these hooks, people are ganking for you mid, you're going to side lane, saving people, hooking people, you get haste runes and all this kind of stuff, sure. You can snowball the game with this hero. I just think mid lane is kind of its worst lane because of a lot of the problems, like I said, with laning and with what you're relying on. Because if you, you don't do that, you just feel really bad. Meepo has been in a bad spot for a long time. It just does Meepo things, farms pretty well, but I think there's so much AoE, there's so many different things that kill this hero now. I mean, obviously they've tried to like buff it in some ways, it's just not enough. That's all for Meepo, honestly. And then that's a cheese hero. Another cheese hero is Visage. Visage has been nerfed a lot or like kind of on the downtrend ever since TI, since it was one of the best heroes. And it was mainly from the off lane and it mainly bought Wraith Pact. But with Wraith Pact getting nerfed and in general with this hero not being as good, it's just kind of, you know, fallen down the list a lot. Plus, it wasn't even that much of a mid anyway to begin with uh, at the time. So now it's in the C tier. It's still pickable. It's still okay as a cheese hero, just not that good. And then D tier, we have DK. Has been very bad for a long time. This hero just needs buffs. They nerfed... It was, like, pretty popular for a little bit. Like, maybe a year ago, six months ago, whatever it was. And then they nerfed, like, the fireball. They nerfed, like, the stun, I think. Or they nerfed the regen. They nerfed, like, a bunch of things about it. And now it's just bad. Like, it just needs buffs, honestly. Either a change or a buff. Skywrath Mage. It's just kind of, like, all-in magic damage. Like, this is, like, Zeus or, like, Puck or, like, something like that. But just even worse. It's just, like, you better be able to kill people full to zero. You better dominate your lane. And, like, if that ever falls off or people get BKBs, you just, like, lose. <laughs> and then Pugna. Pugna's, like, honestly, like, has similar problems to Necro with the Decrepify. Or, like, it's kind of similar to Necro in the sense of if you have good matchups and people can't deal with you, you can, like, dominate. But that's very rare. And you just kind of would be lucky to do that. And I think this hero also falls off in the same way Skywrath Mage does. Um, like, you're all about the magic damage. And if that, you know, with like I said, with Pipe and all these other things being good, it just doesn't feel great. Void Spear right now has been, like, this hero has been for the last year or two or, two or probably you know, when, since it came out, this has been like one of the best, if not the best spirit hero has been consistently S and A tier for so long. It's just been nerfed and nerfed and nerfed and nerfed. Um, so the damage numbers are really bad now. The cooldowns, all that kind of stuff are just really bad compared to what they once were. And you really are like, even compared to like Ember and Storm, you're very much a commit hero. Like, because you, you have mobility, but you really only have two mobility spells. I mean, I guess you have three, but like, they're just not as long of a distance and you really have to commit. So if that committing doesn't work out, you're like screwed. Uh, and I've always felt that with the hero. It's just that in the past, you had a lot of, you had a lot of ways to just cause havoc in the game to really be annoying and deal a ton of damage. But now that the damage numbers are lower, like a lot of the stuff is just worse. It's just those weaknesses of the hero that have always been there are coming back to bite him very, very hard. So he's just like the worst the worst spirit right now and kind of almost like unpickable in a lot of ways. And then finally we have F tier. So F tier we have Keeper of the Light has fallen off for a long time. I almost would like have a feeling that I should just remove this hero from the list because it's been about six months since it was even relevant. Um, so it might just, it's not even a mid right now. Like just get this off the list in some ways, but just don't pick it please. Cause I've seen it picked every once in a while and just like stop please. <laughs> and then we have Gyrocopter. Uh, this hero is just kind of almost more of a support. It's either a carry or a support, more of a support now. The carry is still very bad, and it's just not a mid and hasn't been a mid in a long time. I think that people still, like, want to try to play this hero mid almost like it's a support from the mid, you know, where it goes for this, like, rocket build and stuff since it's not farming. But I just don't think that really works right now. I kind of want to see the rocket build and this, like, support match damage build become more of a thing. It is kind of cool, and it is, like, annoying in a way. And so it, it can be good at times, but I just don't think it's good enough. So we put an F. Uh, Magnus, I don't think is a mid laner. This here is just more of an off laner and has been for a long time because if you play it from mid, you want to like farm the mid camp, the mid small camp is gone and it's just not how the hero works right now. So it's just F tier. And then lastly, we have Alchemist. It's not an Alchemist patch. I think if you're going to pick the hero, you should probably pick it carry. It's just not a mid, no small camp. Like I said, same thing with Magnus. 
And it just feels like if you have this mid laner, yes, a lot of these he heroes like from the mid lane, like Lena, you know, all Tinker, Tiny, a lot of these heroes, like they farm, sure. And they want to get a lot of farming items and they're carrying from the mid lane, but they're not just like AFK farming. And if you notice, like even with the carries in the carry list, like Medusa, Luna, a lot of these sitting back and just farming heroes, uh, PA, they're just not good because you want to be active in the game. You want to have some kind of participation in the game, whether it's even defending towers or anything. Not that you necessarily have to be killing heroes, but you want to participate in the game. And Alchemist just like straight up doesn't do that for 15 to 20 minutes. So it's just not an Alchemist patch. So that is F tier and that is the tier list. That is the mid lane tier list for patch 7.32D. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. If you like the video, like, comment, subscribe, all of those kinds of things. And if you haven't yet, go join the Discord or go to my Patreon and support me there if you want to see more of these videos into the future. And I also offer coaching there as well. So as always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.